Happy Saturday! Join me in this artsy, crafty, fun, and yummy weekend as we learn how to create different, creative, and meaningful projects. I am Teacher Alex and this is Teacher Vibo Weekend Special where we will engage in experiments, explore do-it-yourself activities, and many more. Before we start with our activity, let me ask you first. What type of transportation do you ride on to go to different countries? Hmm, is it jeepney? No, to go to different countries, we ride an airplane or a ship. But for today, we will focus on airplanes. Have you ever played with planes? Well, we cannot play with a real airplane, can we? So for today, we will make paper planes! Have you tried this? Do you still know how to make this? Well, let's stop being nostalgic and let us soar high with our paper planes! Have you ever wondered what makes a paper plane fly? Some paper planes fly better than the others. We have always asked our playmates why their paper planes fly better than ours. In today's activity, we will build our own paper planes and see how the design would affect how it flies. Did you know the forces that make paper planes fly are also the ones that apply to real airplanes? Yup, that's right. Now, let's talk about force, thrust, and gravity. These three words are connected when flying a plane. Let's get to know them one by one. A force is something that pushes or pulls on something else. When you throw a paper plane in the air, you are giving the plane a push to move forward. This is called thrust. The weight of the plane also affects its flight, as the gravity pulls it down towards the earth. I think that's enough with all the technicalities. Now let's proceed to the main activity. The materials that we will be needing for this are some sheets of paper, a ruler, and the string or a tape. I just have one reminder. If you are going to fly your plane in an open area, make sure that there isn't any wind. Did you get all that? Now let's start. Follow these steps to learn how to make your own paper plane. Lay a sheet of paper on the table. Fold it in half, lengthwise to create a crease. Then, open the paper again and flip it on the other side. Now, pull the top right corner of the paper towards the crease, creating a triangle. Do this step on the other side. You should create a sharp tip now. Then fold the paper in half again, lengthwise. Now you have two flaps. Pull the first flap towards the edge of your fold. Pull the same flap again towards the edge of the fold. We are going to do these steps on the other flap as well. And there you have it! You now have your own paper plane! Wow! We now have our own paper planes! Now let's go to a large open area. But kids, make sure you don't go too far. Ask help from your guardians. It is not safe to go out because of the pandemic. So make sure to find a safe outer place where there are no people when trying this experiment. Okay? Wonderful! Make a line in front of you that is at least one foot long going from left to right.
This will be the starting line from which you will fly your paper plane. First, place your toe on the line you prepared and throw the paper plane. Did it fly very far? Now, throw the plane at least four more times. Each time before you throw the plane, make sure it is still in good condition or that the folds and points are still sharp, okay? When you toss it, place your toe on the line and try to launch the plane with a similar amount of force, including gripping it at the same spot. Did it go about the same distance each time? Now let's try to change the plane's shape. Will it affect how the plane flies? Let's discover! To do this, cut slits that are about 1 inch long right where either wing meets the middle ridge. Fold up the cut section on both wings so that each now has one inch wide section at the end of the wing that is folded up at about a 90 degree angle from the rest of the wing. Throw your modified paper plane at least five more times, just as you did before. How far does the paper plane fly now compared to our first try? Did it fly better? Did it reach further? Try making paper planes out of different types of paper, such as construction paper and newspaper. So what are the results? As a paper plane moves through the air, the air pushes against the plane, slowing it down. This force is called drag. You may ask, what is drag? To help you understand this better, Imagine that you are holding an umbrella on a windy day. As the wind blows harder, it pushes your umbrella up. The force of the air that pushes your umbrella upwards is what we call the drag, or also sometimes referred to as air resistance. This is also what happens to a modified plane. It experiences a greater amount of drag which pushes it back more than the original plane. This experiment clearly demonstrates how altering the shape and form of the plane dramatically changes how well it flies because of how the force acts on it. Considering the force, thrust, and gravity affecting our airplanes, there are designs that we can try to make special airplanes that are meant to fly fast, soar high, and stay afloat in the air for quite a while. Curious how these are created? Come on and let's try these specialized airplanes. First, a fast plane. To create a very fast paper plane that will surely reach your target, you need to make sure that instead of making its wings wide, you must narrow it to its center. You may try imagining a pointed paper dart in making this, but don't lose the airplane shape as you do so. Making its nose pointed like a real airplane lessens the air resistance. Thus, it can travel quickly than other models. Look at the bullet trains of Japan, the nose of an airplane, or even a rocket. They are all pointed, right? This is to lessen the drag or air resistance. Second is the fly-high plane. This is actually the same with how you create your regular paper planes.
its wide wings are enough to support the weight of its nose caused by the folds in creating the plane itself. Its wide wings are also the reason why it can soar high. Do you know why? Because as you put force to thrust the plane to the air, the airflow is gathered under the wings of your plane, letting it soar high as it can in the air. See how the airplane does it? Well, it's a lot more complicated because it has engines, but notice that its wings are also wide enough to support its weight. In making a plane to soar high, it is important that you balance the size of your wings to support the weight of your plane. Last but not the least is the smooth glide plane. So what is special about this plane? Well, from the name itself, it smoothly glides in the air as if it's floating for quite a while before it drops. There are many existing models for this, but to make ours fancy, let's try the curly wings. Let's try making one. Again, it is the same with the regular plane. However, instead of a straight edge on its wings, you'll curl it up using a pen or a pencil. Oh, and don't forget to make the wings wide as well. Again, wide wings are effective in supporting the plane's weight and the curls will help so that the plane will glide as it flies through the air. Careful not to curl it much. We would only like to smoothen up the edges so that it will glide in the air like the birds in the sky. Fantastic, right? This just shows that understanding a few fundamentals of science behind these things can create the simplest activity, such as throwing paper planes a lot more interesting and exciting. Hmm, are you ready to fly your paper planes with your friends? Let's see whose plane is the fastest, the highest, and the most graceful glider in the air. Like these paper planes, you will also soar high. Our wings may be clipped for now, but soon, you will get to fly and reach your dreams. Join us again next week for more exciting DIY videos. Again, I am Teacher Alex and this is Teacher Vival Weekend Special. Stay safe everyone!